I do recall his name sounded like a Sesame Street character, um, more so than a uh, Supreme Court justice, but you know. Let's do it. In 1999, an awesome collective of dudes were deposited in Big Sky Country via the Uncle Sam Express, destined for adventures unknown. Faced with living in a maximum security social nightmare, and trapped in a land time forgot, these dudes bonded quick, fast, and in a hurry, eventually blasting out onto the garbage can world at large. Today, perpetually searching for their next great adventure, these dudes thrive as ambassadors of awesomeness. If you're a fan of laughter and other shenanigans, and you can locate this podcast, then perhaps you can join us to get a little GCD. Hey, Howdy folks, Double J back here, coming at you live slash recorded from deep in mound country of Cincinnati. That's right folks of the interwebs, I have foregone my studio slash spare bedroom for the recording studio, the fancy, fancy recording studio here at the Cincinnati Public Library. And a little fun fact for you folks of the interwebs. I'm just a stone's throw away from the uh, largest conical mountain. Used to sit where today sits the Fountain Square. Perhaps you folks of the interwebs are more familiar with the Fountain Square from from the opening scenes of the television show WKRP in Cincinnati. Folks of the interwebs, thanks again for joining us today to get a little GCD. Double J here again. I will be your pilot and navigator for this shenanigan-infused journey into the mind of this particular garbage can dude. And not gonna lie to you folks of the interwebs, I got a real dandy on deck for y'all today. I'm gonna twist you folks a tale of old Donald J. Trump and all the uh, conspiracies and controversy that surround this fella. But before I delve into that tale, and uh, twist y'all a real dandy of a, a tale regarding these here conspiracies of uh, surrounding Donald J. Trump. Let's talk criminal activities. Now, this here library I'm sitting in, again, the center of Cincinnati, right next door to the uh, the Fountain Square, where that big old large bastard of a conical mound once sat, uh, I believe 30 feet in height, to be exact, but diameter much larger than that. It covered a couple city blocks. And let's talk criminal activities, because as I sit in this here fancy studio in the city of Cincinnati, the city that George built, the uh, the studio seems to be readily available. While I appreciate that as a consumer, I have to ask myself, why is this here fancy studio so readily available? Why does no one else want to use it? Why is all the times available? Again, not complaining here, folks. But if you want to get down to brass tacks of it, this place ain't anywhere near the Cameo nightclub shooting. But I'll tell you one thing, Johnny. The uh, the number of calls that this place averages, uh, that's police calls, that is, uh, calls to the police each year exceed the, the uh, number at the Cameo by far. I mean, I'm talking... This is a library, again. I'm talking everything from drugs to diddlers to overdoses to fucking guns and a goddamn partridge in a pear tree. I mean, what the fuck is going on here, Johnny? Is this library in Cincinnati or Fallujah? Now, I'm not certain that's uh, this... uh, this criminal environment that exists here, whether it be shootings in nightclubs or uh, fucking stabbings or no D's outside the library. You know, I'm not certain that's what old George Washington and his buddy Alexander Hamilton had in mind when they started this joint. That's right. Alexander Hamilton County, as in 
Hamilton County, where the city of Cincinnati sits. Old uh, Alex Hamilton was the second president general of the society after old G-Dubs had retired. And, uh, in fact, he was also the first secretary of the treasury under G-Dubs in a political capacity. It was uh, actually this post, the president general of the Society of Cincinnati, that old Alexander Hamilton held at the time of his demise by at the hands of a fellow Society of Cincinnati member, Aaron Burr. It was old uh, A. A. Ron who had murdered uh, Alex Hamilton in a duel in Weehawken, New Jersey. Um, funny thing is, though, I don't believe he ever got charged for that. Hmm. Strange to kill the kill that man in such fashion and not get them charges. Albeit never charged for a crime, he was uh, banished, so to speak. In fact, he fled to an island upstream from Cincinnati in the Ohio River, where, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he forged a plan to take over the United States. And when that failed, I believe old A. A. Ron attempted to take over uh, Texas and Mexico. I believe there was some Texas and Mexico stuff kind of mashed in there together. I don't know. I believe he failed in that too. But my question there is, uh, these dudes are dueling. What are they dueling about? Is it for? Uh, is it a coup of the Society of Cincinnati, so to speak? Was A. A. Ron attempting to take over that society from Hamilton? Or perhaps even... Uh, Maybe their duel was mound boner related. You never know. Well, my apologies, folks. Uh, apparently my mound boner was showing once again, and I've gotten way off topic. So uh, let me twist y'all that tale. Donald J. Trump. This dude is quite possibly one of the most controversial dudes we've had sitting in the uh, Oval Office. In fact, I'm not sure if we've seen this much controversy since, hell, Nixon. Old Tricky Dick and his Watergate scandal. You know, that time that they broke in and tried to plant a bunch of evidence on the opposing parties and whatnot. And also included Tricky Dick's attempted shakedown of then-CIA director Dick Helms. You know, over quote-unquote that whole Bay of Pigs thing. Hard to tell what those fellas were talking about. Definitely can't be JFK related. Also, seems like a lot of folks today are getting butt hurt about all these WikiLeaks releases and Vault 7 and whatnot and yada, yada, yada. That folks are listening to emails and talking on text messages or whatever. Uh, here's the thing, folks, over the interwebs. It's 1972, uh, maybe? We'll call it two. And Tricky Dick was in the White House, and they're recording him, so uh, get over it. But if we're, I mean, if we're getting back to the brass tacks here and talking controversy, I mean, Trump, Donald J. Trump's coming with so much controversy, he may be out, old Tricky Dick. It's too early to tell. It may be since uh, uh, old, uh, hell, since old teapot, the old teapot dome scandal of the 1920s, since we've seen this much controversy out of the Oval Office. That's, uh, of course, the uh, Teapot Dome scandal is when uh, President uh, Warren G. Harding took over the helm and told the Department of Navy to transfer some some vast oil reserves over to the Department of Interior, where the Department of Interior secretary, a fellow by the name of Albert Fall, turned out he was the Fall guy because uh, a couple years later, Heading up the Department of Interior there, decided to uh, go ahead and sell that property to some uh, wealthy oil barons for a bribe, of course, at a no-bid contract. Well, apparently he was the fall guy of that operation, cause, and he would probably be pretty upset about the situation if he lived to see the Vietnam or Iraq wars and their no-bid contracts. Because old Albert Fall got some jail time over this. This was, in fact, the first time we had a uh, member of a presidential administration, a cabinet head, go to prison. And uh, the funny part about that was when they uh, when they convicted old Albert of taking that bribe, you know, the Fall guy, he, uh, he got convicted of taking a bribe from Ed Doheny. He'd be your uh, Daniel Day-Lewis character from the Paul Thomas Anderson film, There Will Be Blood. 
Great film. Fantastic film. Um, but that would be your Ed Doheny character, you know, the Daniel Day-Lewis. That fella, he actually got acquitted for the same charge. Now, how one man gets convicted of taking the bribe and the other man gets acquitted of offering the bribe, it's beyond me, folks. It's beyond me. But hell, you know, old Donald J. Trump's controversies and conspiracies may in fact exceed that level. We may be talking uh, circa 1876 Oval Office presidential controversy levels here, folks. Hell, I'm thinking the, this whole Trump thing definitely rivals that. And uh, for you folks of the interwebs not familiar with the presidential election of 1876, that was when uh, essentially the folks of the Beltway, you know, the Beltway bureaucrats, if you will, and the folks in Congress... They basically decided to flip a coin to decide who was going to become president. That led to what is quote-unquote called the Great Compromise of 1877. Uh, I think a more accurate name for that event would be the Great Presidential Coin Flip of 1876. Well, folks of the interwebs, uh, like I said, Donald J. Trump, the man, the myth, the legend, the controversies and conspiracies revolving around this fella, may in fact top all that put together. Only time will tell. Let's jump into this tale here today, folks. I'll uh, catch you on the flip here with that uh, Donald J. Trump conspiracy extravaganza. And folks of the interwebs, thanks again for joining us today to get a little GCD. All right, folks of the interwebs, let's get after it. Perhaps it's just me, but I feel like if I were to hop into a time machine and travel back to 1996, uh, you know, much like the film Back to the Future, where Marty McFly travels back to 1955 and attempts to explain to old Dr. Emmett Brown that Ronald Reagan is the president in 1985. Well, here's the thing, folks. This is kind of how I would feel if I were to have to try to go back to 1996 and try to explain to myself that, uh, you know, Donald J. Trump was going to be the president in 20 years. Uh, I feel like that exchange would uh, would go something like this. Uh, do what now, dude? Yeah, right. You mean to tell me that casino operator and proprietor of the Miss Universe pageant is going to be the president of the United States of America. Get the fuck out of here, Johnny. But hey, you know, stranger things have happened. Clearly, that's the world we live in today. Uh, You know, and congratulations to him for winning it. You know, it's, uh, he appeared to me to take, uh, take a page right out of old Barry Sotoro's playbook. I mean, Obama's playbook, you know, the 2008 campaign of quote-unquote change. You know, I I think it's these nondescript phrases that uh, sound so impactful to folks, but, uh, you know, I guess they appear to be appealing. Don't ask me. I couldn't tell you. Uh, You know, like I said, I'll uh, I'll reserve my, uh, my opinion for a few more years from now. Time has a good way of uh, portraying a more accurate sight picture compared to contemporary speculation and whatnot. But, uh, you know, make America great again? I mean, really? But, you know, let's, uh, let's speculate for a moment anyway here, folks. What if old Donald J. Trump, a.k.a. DJ T. Rump, because I think he's just in there to mix it up personally. What So what if old DJ T-Rump was only on the scene to mix things up, you know? 
Perhaps his public appearance and persona is different from the one behind the curtain. You never know, folks. Just saying. But, you know, I'm taking a more objective view towards this because, you know, while I may not be a big fan, I can't say I'm a big fan of any politician. So, nothing against him specifically. It's more of a more of a just general distaste for the demographic. However, uh, let's as like I said, old Donald J. Trump, aka DJ T. Rump, he uh, he's a controversial fella, you know, perhaps the most ever that we've had in the Oval Office. Only time will tell. But that being said, let's take a look from the left angle. Let's take a look from the right angle, and let's maybe shoot a couple right down the middle as far as these conspiracies go. So let's look at the first one coming in real hot from the left. It, the Russians did it. Now, this is a very, very popular conspiracy surrounding Donald J. Trump. The uh, Apparently, the folks on the left, the Democrats and whatnot, they claim that the Ruskies tipped the scales of the election in, in favor of Trump. You know... And, uh, of course, their, their candidate lost, so there is a good deal of butt-herdedness involved in that claim. Um, but I feel like much of that claim in general is just engulfed in uh, one man's emails. And, well, not specifically just one man, but focused on one man's emails. And that was the campaign chairman of Hillary Clinton's campaign. And he was to be, as if Hillary won, he would have been Secretary of State. Well, apparently, old Johnny Boy's private emails allegedly uh, discussing child trafficking and other sordid like activities were leaked to the entire world. And the Democrats and old Johnny Podesta himself did not claim these emails were forged or even a fakery of any sorts. He instead declared the Russians did it. What are you going to do? Goddamn Russians, apparently. Um, let's see here. What else? What other conspiracies we got coming in from the left uh oh this is a good one donald trump pays hookers to piss on beds in russia that the obamas slept on this conspiracy theory uh seems a bit odd to me it doesn't seem to extend past the geographical borders of russia as in i doesn't appear that this conspiracy around old donald j trump uh, involves him allegedly pissing on beds anywhere else in the entire world except for Russia. Uh, what ha- happened? <clears throat> that just seems silly to me. Not only that, uh, it's only beds that the Obama slept on. These are very specific factors. I don't know that this dude's into uh, pissing on anybody, nor do I know that there's any validity to that claim at all. I just think it's a funny conspiracy that surrounds this man. And I don't know that we've ever had a fella in the Oval Office that uh, may or may not be into golden showers, you know. the uh, You you just can't tell, though. You never know. Until recently, I didn't know that uh, musical legend Chuck Berry liked farting in hookers' faces. But, you know, that's a thing, too, apparently. And let's keep keep trucking here on to the, uh, the next conspiracy from the left angles. Ooh, man, I, I feel like a lot of these conspiracies are from the left and the right are kind of rooted in the same business at times. This one in particular, the Trump cabinet. Lord of mercy, it's been, uh, you know, it may be easier just to just focus on this this one on the Trump Supreme Court nominee since that's the, the hot topic for the moment anyhow. And uh, it's a far more simpler approach from this angle. I um, couldn't tell you the fellow's name, uh, the Supreme Court nominee, that is. I do recall his name sounded like a Sesame Street character, um, more so than a uh, Supreme Court justice. But, you know, it's, uh, it's 2017. New, uh, new barriers are getting broken down every day. Maybe it's time to have a Sesame Street character on the Supreme Court bench. Who am I to, who am I to make these decisions? But this whole scene forced upon the American people, this... Uh, must be hooting and hollering as the Republican side of the Senate somehow hucklebuck the situation and uh, managed to cancel the ability to filibuster a Supreme Court justice nomination. 
You know, well, apparently a meaningless action, the, the old filibuster, that is. I'm not typically inclined to sign up for just, you know, tossing away leg- legislative procedure out all uh, willy-nilly like like that. So, uh, I have to imagine this has the left side of shit fuming. Of course, the funny part of that whole scene to me is the theatrics of the matter. Here you got Senate Majority Leader old Mitch McConnell, the Republican senator from Kentucky, you uh, you may know him better as the uh, the fellow that looks like a cartoon turtle. Um, well, so he was apparently at the helm of this anti-filibuster situation. And, uh, you know, just a few years back, this, uh, this son-in-law of a wealthy Chinese billionaire who, uh, who just happens to be the Senate Majority Leader now was the uh, Senate Minority Leader just a few years back when he had a different song and dance upon the uh, action of the Democrats doing away all willy-nilly like with the uh, the filibuster of a cabinet appointee. Well, here's the thing, folks. Sometimes the plane banks left and sometimes it banks right, but you got to have a left wing and a right wing to steer this fucking jumbo jet we like to call America. You ever seen a jumbo jet with only one wing? Doubt it. It's all part of the show, folks. It's all part of the show. Let's take a peek, peek ski from the right side here, folks, of the interwebs. First one we got on deck here on the right. Uh, the Russians did it. I'm not sure what the uh, where the research department here was talking about. Have to go over these notes better in the future, but uh, apparently the Russians did it. Oh, here we go. But the right, the folks on the right are still not quite sure what they did, but they're they're certain that the Ruskies definitely did it. I understand now. I agree with that too. Yeah, so number one, the Ruskies did it. We we're just not quite sure what they did yet. And uh, coming in numero dos on the Donald J. Trump conspiracy lists from the right side of the spectrum. Uh, Trump is in cahoots with Hillary. I feel like this one was very popular during the election process, during all the campaigning and whatnot. I feel like I, uh, a, lot of, a lot of rumblings, a lot of, a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a couple what have yous. But I feel like this one's not even dead in the water yet because uh, um, I'm pretty sure there's probably still folks out there saying, hmm, I don't know about this guy, I don't know about this Trump fella. You know, he's he voted Democrat before. He's donated money to Hillary. I don't know about all this. He went to Chelsea's wedding. I don't know about all this. Him and Bill like to bang young women together. I don't know about all this. I actually have no idea if Bill Clinton and Donald J. Trump like to bang young women together. I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, the uh, point of the matter is, I feel like during the campaign, and there, folks were just waiting for Trump to just fucking toss in the towel at the last minute. And uh, that's a f- very funny concept to have versus your two primary candidate, you know, uh, you know, opponents in a presidential campaign. I'm not sure that we've ever had that before where there was great suspicion that the opposing candidate was merely propping up the other presidential candidate. I mean, I think a lot of folks suspected that with Al Gore because he's kind of a mouth breather. But, uh, yeah, I don't know about all that. You know, results aren't in. Much like the hanging chad of the Al Gore uh, presidential campaign, the, uh, the results aren't in. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's probably still folks today that are still like, I don't know about this Trump fella, you know, especially the uh, Hillary for prison contingent of folks. They're definitely still hollering over this one, you know, because, of course, everyone thought that old DJ T. Rump was going to toss Hillary in prison for all the scandals, right? Yeah. Yeah, right, Johnny. Yeah, right. All right, number three, uh, coming in from the right angle, coming in on approach from the right side at number three, we got 
Who cleaned what swamp? I, don't, I guess this is probably more of a middle of the road. Now that I think about it, uh, this is the one I'm going to toss right down the center. Who cleaned what swamp? Uh, you know, I think this may actually be a legitimate conspiracy in question here. Trump touted the whole routine of, I'm going to clean some swamps. Didn't know he was into that industry. I thought he just built casinos and buildings and whatnot. But then he's like, I'm going to clean some swamps. And then he hires a bunch of the same old crew into his uh, cabinet administration posts. You know, you got the wife of uh, a pyramid scheme, Amway heir. Um, They're billionaires. She's running the Department of Education. That's a joke. Uh, The former, let's see, we got the former CEO of the world's largest oil company. Yikes. Uh, Let's see. Coming up next in the DJT rump cabinet, the individual most likely to win a contest for uh, hairstyle that most looks like a helmet, former Texas governor and uh, possibly human wart, Rick Perry, uh, and uh, Wade Fort folks of the interwebs, one more swamp resident that old Donnie boy brought to the Beltway boondoggle because old Rick Perry wasn't the best one yet. The uh, last but not least, the Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Ross, former CEO of uh, Rothschild Investments. Yep, those Rothschilds perhaps more famously known for their invention of the debt-based central banking system that we all operate under today. It appears that old Wilbur may in fact be responsible, and then in turn the Rothschilds for that matter, may in fact be responsible for putting that third comma, you know, that billionaire comma, back in the Donald Trump equation. See, as it appears... Long before old DJ T. Rump was a hit reality TV star, he took a brief absence from the Forbes Richest Americans list. Aw, shucks. But from 1990 to 1995, old uh, Donald J. Trump uh, was absent from that list. Which, uh, far cry, because in 1989 he was coming in real hot with a billion And uh, then suddenly not on the list at all. What happened in 1990-1991 situations? Don't know. Couldn't tell you. Wasn't there. Uh, But in 1996, he's back. He's like, hey, folks, I'm back on the list. Of course, he had about a quarter of his net worth on that Forbes list than he did when he was hitting that B mark of a billion and uh, turns out 1996, it was just about this time when uh, El Presidente Trump himself made some biz dealings, got into some business dealings with uh, old Wilbur Ross, current Commerce Secretary. And uh, it appears that uh, perhaps old Ross Child Incorporated uh, may have made some Donald J. Trump investments, helping him get out of hock, so to speak. I don't know, Johnny. Just seems a bit odd. Just saying. And last but not least, the Donald J. Trump card of all conspiracies. What if Donald Trump could time travel? What's that? You uh, you don't think that there's any evidence to support such a wild claim, huh? I suppose that depends on one's perception, how one perceives such evidence. You know, the facts I speak of. Allegedly, old uh, Donald J. Trump's uncle, John Trump, we'll call him Johnny. Old Johnny Trump was uh, working for the War Department there in uh, World War II, like many Americans. It was old uh, Johnny Trump that was called from his post at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, to come work on the uh, for the department that would make the Manhattan Project and provide to the entire world the atomic bomb. Well, being a scientist working for them, for that department in the war, World War II, that is, old uh, old Johnny Trump got assigned to to go inspect the equipment in scientific notes of one of the greatest scientific minds of the last century, one Nikola Tesla. Nope. He has nothing to do with uh, with an electric car, 
other than uh, the PayPal founder, Elon Musk, who started the Tesla car company, named it after that man, and for good reason. Nikola Tesla was a sorcerer of electricity, or so the, so the legend goes, allegedly developing wireless electricity in so long ago in America that today's visionaries such as Bill Gates, Elon Musk, or, or even Donald J. Trump were even suckling on their mama's titties. So Nikola Tesla, strange man, man of intrigue, What did Uncle Trump there find? What did old Johnny Trump find there in the uh, works of one Nikola Tesla? Well, who the fuck knows but old Johnny himself. Or perhaps he told his nephew, Donald. See, as the story goes, old Johnny Trump left his posh post of a professorship at MIT to support America in that Second World War. Researching top-secret projects at the National Defense Research Committee, a.k.a., once again, the folks who had developed the atomic bomb. It was old Johnny Trump that went to the New Yorker Hotel upon Nikola Tesla's death to go inspect his belongings and scientific experiments and whatnot. And, of course, all that Tesla stuff, all that Tesla science, cutting-edge science stuff, it got marked classified by the government and uh, lost, quote-unquote. It's probably sitting there in that warehouse next to uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Indiana Jones style, of course. But seriously, folks, 21 gigawatts and flying DeLoreans aside, what if Nikola Tesla did it? What if he developed some manner in which to time travel? He would be the man to do it. After all, he was one of the greatest scientific minds of the last century, and he achieved mad scientist style very early on. And you mean to tell me that Donald J. Trump's uncle was possibly the only dude to have full inspection of the man's scientific catalog, and then the world is presented this fantastic clip? And I pose to you this question before we play this clip. Donald Trump, time traveler. You tell me, folks of the interwebs. You tell me. Before I play this clip, this is a clip from CNN circa June 1st of 2011. This would also be known as the day that the world was introduced to Anthony Weiner's Weiner. Courtesy, courtesy of then Congressman Weiner, blasting shots of his dick all around social media sites, as if he fucking discovered America or something. Just saying, this dude loves showing folks photos of his dick. And this clip I'm about to play is from CNN, June first, 2011, talking to the CNN fella, uh, Donald J. Trump, of course, that is, talking to the CNN fella about his disgust, and he's flipping back and forth, as he says, between Pizzagate and Anthony Wienergate. I'm going to play that clip right now. Uh, Last time I had him on my show was in a fairly lively debate with you, actually. Uh, What do you make of this? Well, I was a little surprised by that debate, because all of a sudden he comes out of nowhere and starts going crazy, and... You know, uh, I've known him over the years, and I learned a lot about him that night. I was absolutely shocked. I mean, he was, I found, to be almost unstable. And I watched this today because I was watching between Pizzagate and uh, Anthony Wienergate. I found Anthony Wienergate to be a terrible situation. All right, folks. So in that clip, again, Donald J. Trump, time traveler, question mark. Because as you can see, Trump is commenting on how he is flipping back and forth between Pizzagate and Anthony Wienergate. Now, I don't know about you folks, but that makes me ask the question, what in the name of Sam Houston is going on here? Did DJ T. Rump know about Pizzagate over five years in advance? Are you serious? Are you fucking kidding me? I can't make this shit up. Well, that's it. 
that's the show here, folks. So the next time you're out on the town, visiting your local watering holes, or perhaps just meandering around, and you hear the unmistakable sounds of metal clanking, and you spot signs of a disturbance, well, check your six. Look in that garbage can, because you never can tell. The GCDs may be loose in your town. <laughs> <laughs>